I'll be speaking at the uh, American Association for the Advancement of Science AAAS meeting in February on one of my major research topics, which is uh, the origin and evolution of life. So what's a physiology professor doing studying the origin of life? Well, if these modules were put together very early in the origins of life, very simple chemicals started selecting each other out, binding each other, and building on top of each other, we should see essentially a molecular paleontology in modern systems. So that's what I go and look for. I look for how do we evolve, say, the glucose regula regulation system, very important for understanding diabetes. And we found some very interesting things, such as that there are very small glucose binding uh, sequences, which occur in all proteins and all peptides like insulin that regulate blood glucose. And it doesn't matter where in the body or whether we're looking at a human being or whether we're looking at, at a bacterium, they all use the same basic little tiny modules. So you can actually see in modern system all the little modules, chemical modules that were there probably from the very beginning, almost 4,000 years ago. Another aspect of my origin of life research is actually sort of boundary breaking in that I am collaborating with a, an associate professor of art here named Adam W. Brown. And we're looking at sort of two aspects of uh, origins of life research, both as uh, sort of a public open source set of experiments uh, where we display the experiments in both art and science museum spaces, galleries, and things like that, and get feedback from people uh, in the public as to, have you tried that? Have you thought of this? Um, ooh, isn't that interesting? That's pretty, you know? I mean, there is actually an art to doing science, and we, we try and explore that. Unfortunately, in science, we tend to be very focused. You're supposed to do very well-controlled experiments. You're always supposed to know what you're going to get. But most of the breakthroughs in science occur when somebody goes and tries something that's crazy, uh, a little bit off the wall, out of the mainstream. Very famous scientists were almost always artists and poets and playwrights and I mean all sorts of things you didn't expect. Scientists often do this privately, don't tell their students about it, which I think is a real shame. So part of my research focuses on trying to make that explicit. You know, what, what does it take to solve scientific problems or be a good economist or be a famous writer? And what's that creative process? What are the mental tools you use? And how would we put those tools into the academic curriculum so that everybody could do a better job at whatever it is they want to do? Mm -hmm.